Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. All of my recordings are on my website. If you like what I do, please leave a review. And if you'd like to support this free service, cover the uh, running costs, or help to cover those, you can go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland and the uh, the links on my website. Now, um, I've got an email, or it's a Facebook message from Kerry. And I'm going to read it to you. And then I'm going to, that's what I'm going to talk about. So it says, hi Jason, I've been listening to your podcast for about a year due to stress and anxiety. They've helped a lot, helped me a lot. Uh, quick question, I've been following the law of attraction in, and uh, so, but I, I, I fear that my negative thoughts will become reality. Why well, fear, you know, the negative thoughts become reality. From a medical pers- perspective, that isn't possible, right? So, just read that last bit. I've been following the law of attraction, uh, and I fear my negative thoughts become a reality. And from a medical perspective, that isn't possible, right? Well, for, uh, the first thing I need to do, I thought if you, if Carrie's listening to this, which I'm sure she is, um, I'm not a doctor. So I, the reason I'm saying that is I can't offer like medical advice or diagnosis or anything like that. Uh, I can tell you what I know or what I believe probably is more to the point. Um, So I'll do that, but as far as if you have any, um, there's any kind of mental health issues and you're worried about it, get in touch with a mental health specialist. Go see your GP, your doctor. If you're under the mental health team, see the psychiatrist, uh, psychologist, whoever, um, or if you've got counsellor, speak to your counsellor. Uh, and that, that's not just to carry, that's to anyone who's concerned about stuff, you know. This, this podcast is a support, uh, like an additional support for people that are also already are also getting help in other places. And I did a recording recently about ask, you know, ask for help. So this is uh, an additional thing. Uh, maybe while you're waiting for help, maybe maybe you've had the help that's available. Perhaps you've had all the counselling that you can get that you're allowed to have on the you know the NHS or with your health service provider. So my understanding, I just want to make sure I understand the question correctly. The first part, you've been following the law of attraction. So I understand that part and I can talk about my understanding of it. The fear of negative thoughts becoming reality. So... It depends, I don't have enough information on this particular situation to give um, my opinion because that's all it's going to be would be an opinion but not from a as I said, I'm not a doctor I don't have a PhD I don't have a medical you know license or anything like that to practice as a as a medical person I'm a qualified counsellor, I've got a degree in that, and I'm a hypnotist. And I've also, you could say, I've kind of got a degree in of 
degree in anxiety in the sense of the amount that I experienced over the years. Depression, anxiety, panic, stress, all that kind of stuff, which I've also talked about in previous recordings. But that was through life experience of having gone through it. And also being bipolar. And having what be also being diagnosed with a emotionally unstable personality disorder, which I didn't even find out until two years after the bipolar medic diagnosis. So all I can do, I want, I like, to, I just need to be careful in these situations because Kerry and anyone else that's listening, go always get professional advice, professional help. There's lots of stuff on the internet that you can find out about. But it's not always going to be positive. I mean, you could like, literally, if you've got a, if you've got a sore throat, and you go online, you can end up thinking you've got like the worst disease in the world, when actually it might just be a sore throat. In fact, it probably more than likely is just a sore throat. But if you're concerned, go to the doctors. Is you know get it checked out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this backwards. I'm gonna start from the last question about whether thinking about something would thinking about a negative thing would cause that negative thing to happen. Now I understand the reason for that question. I think, because the idea of the law of attraction is what you think about, what you focus on. For example, you focus on positive things, you focus on what you do want in order to get what you do want. So the logical thing is when you flip it on its side, is if you focus on what you don't want, then you're going to get what you don't want. That's the logical, that would be, the, for me, that would be the logical kind of conclusion to that idea of what you focus on, you get. However, the law of attraction, my understanding, and I have studied it, um, to quite some depth I'm not quite sure why but I got really into it recently uh, the last probably the last three or four months of last year I was listening to a lot of audios watching everything on YouTube I could find reading books and it wasn't just a case of watching The Secret you know the video The Secret the movie and I, I watched that probably ten years ago and you can watch that and it gives you no information at all, pretty much. It's just a bunch of famous people uh, telling you that how brilliant the secret is. But it doesn't really give the... So I watched it for about an hour and a half. It's like, okay, but what, what do I have to do? And then it became all this... It was almost very mystical. You know, it's like dialing dial in a, a telephone number and directly to the universe and asking the universe for something and it will just give it to you. Well, some, some books will say that. But if you, if you go to, for breadth and you look at the different things that people are saying and the people that teach this for a living... The conclusion I come with from this is it's not about just thinking about something and just, uh, you know, and it comes true. Actions need to be taken as well. So I can think all I want about being rich. You know, I can think about having £10 million in my bank account. I can focus on it, I can visualize it, I can think about it every waking day, I can meditate on it, 
But if I don't get out of bed, and don't actually do something, and if I don't leave my house, how is that 10 million pounds going to arrive in my bank account? Well, it isn't. You know, it's not going to happen. So, it isn't a case of just what you think about happening is going to happen. There's there's more to it. There's more, it's kind of like, there's more chance of what you want to happen, happening if you think positively. If you walk up to someone that you don't know, and you say hello to them. If you expect them, and in your mind you're thinking that they're going to be friendly to you, or if you go into a job interview and you're expecting that they're going to like you, and you assume that they're going to like you, and you've rehearsed it in your mind for the last couple of days, that when you get into the interview, you're going to come across really well, you're going to feel confident. And they're going to like you and they're going to want to uh, employ you. There's more chance that that's going to go really well than if you did nothing. So if you made no preparations, just turned up and you know just went to the interview and just went through the motions. I would say that there's a much higher probability that you will come across way better. You will feel a lot more confident and you're probably going to like them better and they're probably going to enjoy your company more than they perhaps would have done. And they're more likely to want to offer you the job. But then if you go a little bit further back and you imagine it going terrible and you ima- and you rehearse all the worst case scenarios oh they're going to hate me I'm going to come across crap and then, you know and the negativity which can happen as we're humans then when you go into that room the energy your energy the way you're holding yourself your confidence level, I'm guessing, wouldn't be particularly high in that moment. And you may not actually come across very well. You may not like them. And they might not, they might not like you. Because of your energy, your attitude, or, you know, whatever it is. I'm saying you, but you know I'm being general there, whoever it was. So those things make a difference. And it's kind of basic psychology, really, from that aspect. So what we think about does affect how we behave. It affects our experience of life, our attitude. There's a Zig Ziglar, he's a a speaker, he was a speaker, very famous. He always used to be talking about um, get rid of your stinking thinking. And it's like, yeah, if you think, if you're thinking crappy thoughts all day, then you're going to have a crappy day. But the reality is, we're not thinking anything all the time. Our thoughts are always changing, aren't they? Because we're fluid. So without having sort of more information from Kerry's message, fearing that negative thoughts become in reality, that seems to fit into the anxiety part you know, expecting the worst. 
And expecting the worst doesn't mean the worst is going to happen. So, you know, you'd, going back to the job interview analogy, I might go for a job interview and I, I might go in feeling positive, confident, expecting them to like me. Doesn't mean they're going to love me, but they might, they might like me. But the chance is more, more, you know, it's, it's very more likely that they will like me if I go in with that attitude and, and I'm friendly and all that stuff. If I go in thinking the absolute worst, like I'm going to sit down and they're going to shout at me and they're going to kick me out and, you know, escort me out by security out of the building because I was such a bad interviewee. That's not going to happen. But you're probably not going to have a, the greatest interview experience. Just emotionally. So having negative thoughts doesn't mean that exactly what you're thinking is going to happen. But it definitely can affect your experience of what happens. It's just like if you're on a bus and you're thinking the whole time that the bus is going to crash you're not going to enjoy that bus ride or you well it's the complete opposite you're going to have a horrible time regardless of whether the bus crashes or not you're going to have a horrible time and the chances of that bus crashing there's more chance probably of winning the lottery than a bus crashing probably it's probably even less less chance than win the lottery. So you're thinking, you know, someone if you're thinking the worst, thinking that something really bad's gonna happen, you're gonna have a horrible time of it. It doesn't mean that the bad thing's gonna happen though. But you just have a crappy, crappy time and you'll feel shitty. That's the truth, isn't it? If every time you leave the house, you think a car's gonna drive onto the pavement or something horrible like that, you're never gonna wanna leave the house. And I've known people like that. And I've helped people like that, actually. There was someone years ago that witnessed uh, terrible accident where a car did go onto the pavement and killed her friend and she wouldn't leave the house and I helped her get to the point where she could walk on the pavement again because that kind of situation is chances of her ever witnessing or even seeing another car on the pavement is practically non-existent so it's getting the brain to change it's kind of getting the brain the brain to start thinking the way it did before that temporary fear which is obvious is going to be there that temporary temporary fear of the pavement's a dangerous place because in that moment it was. That spot where the car went onto the pavement was the most dangerous place in the world to be right then. But since that happened, guaranteed hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people have walked past and stood on that spot on that pavement and nothing's happened to them. And it was absolute tragedy that it happened that day I remember it 
because I was right around the corner from there and uh, it was horrible but the pavement is no longer dangerous it was dangerous for that 10 minutes or 20 minutes however long the, you know the car was on the pavement but after that the pavement's not dangerous anymore and the pavement never was dangerous it was the car not the pavement and it was an accident it was a freak accident so I think if I was going to walk to town every day and I'm not because it's way too far to walk but if I'm thinking the whole time and I do this journey every day for the next three months and I repeat I'm not going to do it but if I did there's a lot of traffic lorries the traffic's very close to the pavement and I'm thinking the whole time the car's going to hit me or it's going to come close to the pavement hit my arm I'm going to, you know whatever if, I, if I'm thinking that the whole time I'll still be here in three months I probably would have lost a bit of weight to be fair but what a crappy time I would have had can you imagine and it's a good two hour walk so that's four hours a day times by 90 days all that time focusing on a negative thing that's never going to happen or the chances is really there's more chance of me marrying a supermodel not going to happen by the way if there are any supermodels out there <laughs> that have very low standards give me a call so you've got the feeling you've got the feeling of uh, do you need to have that feeling You know, I'd rather have 89 days of walking feeling completely re relaxed and calm and one day maybe of feeling stressed and worried. Or maybe deal with it if it happens. Because we are quite good at dealing with stuff. In fact, in some ways, it's the idea of something happening can, some, can sometimes feel worse than the event itself. I'm not talking about getting run over, I'm not talking about something extreme, but just like witnessing something or, you know, it's actually like driving having a crash but being okay but the, the experience it's not nice but if you're driving and that's all you're thinking about you might as well get out of that car and get yourself a bus pass because this is going to be a horrible experience so I think my answer kind of to the question fear and negative thoughts becoming reality no I mean, that's, that's how the mind tricks you with anxiety and stress and panic attacks is that what, 99.9.9.9.9 whatever percentage of what we worry about doesn't happen the things that we fear don't happen most people's fears do not happen 
doesn't mean that crappy things don't happen. Of course they do. We, I mean, everyone listening to this is old enough to have had quite a few rubbishy experiences. It's just part of being alive, isn't it? Some are worse than others. We've also had wonderful experiences. So thinking about something positively can have a huge effect on how you feel. It can help you it can help to drive you. So if you if you really are driven by let's say money, let's say you do want to have you know ten million dollars in the bank, it drives you. See, if you're if you're negative, you ain't going. You're not going to have ten million in the bank, unless you've already got it. You know, you're not going to. Negativity does not create wealth. In you know, within a person that has negativity, unless perhaps you write books. I suppose Stephen King, some of his books are not the most uh, positive. Those horror books are very negative aren't they I suppose but but forgetting that it's like it's what you do with that energy with that positive energy with those positive thoughts because that's what drives people so if someone's feeling positive and they're saying they might literally be saying to universe you know give me that money but at the same time they're doing something to create that wealth or if someone is wanting a healthier body laying in bed saying I want to have a slimmer waist no matter how positive you are you know we all know that it needs action but what the positive thoughts the uh, whatever you want to call it, you know, maybe asking the universe or um, what is what is it called? Let's have a look. Um, the law of attraction is we attract. We attract things that are attracted to us. So we become attractive to those things. But on the same side, if you're, if you unattract things that kind of maybe you don't want, you don't really want it, maybe you think you want a job but actually you don't want that particular job and you might come across a bit negative maybe a bit cocky maybe whatever and you don't get offered the job and you might be pissed off and then you may get offered another job next week that you really want so you know sometimes we we let off that energy, we give it out, and we're not always maybe aware of what we do want. So that's part of the law of attraction, is finding out what you actually want, and focusing on what you do want, not on what you don't want. And taking action to get those things. And when you're focusing most of your time on what you do want, it means you'll be in a positive mode. You'll, be in a, you'll have a lot more energy to do the things necessary to get the things you want. So for me, it's a practical thing. It's not a spiritual thing. It's not a universe thing for me. It's... It's about, you know, you get what you focus on. 
you get what you think about. So, but that doesn't mean in a negative way. It doesn't mean if you think, uh, you know, an extreme situation, if you think there's going to be a volcano, it doesn't mean a volcano is going to erupt. But if you think that it's going to be a good day, if you really believe that, you know, what you do is going to be successful and somebody's going to enjoy it, whatever it is you're doing, maybe you've made a painting, you've painted something, or you've created something new. Because creativity comes out of positivity, generally. And even, you could say, oh, what about vaccines for pox and polio and stuff like that? That wasn't a, that wasn't a positive thing. Well, I bet you the person that created the vaccine for that stuff was a very positive person. Especially after, you know, it was successful. So positivity is not, for me, it's, I used to think it was like walking around with a big smile on your face and being pretend, you know, pretending to be happy. But it's not. Well, I don't think it is. Some people might think that, but my understanding is not. It's about, first of all, noticing when you're being negative. Getting in touch with how you feel, you know, Realizing that that your your head and your body is connected with that little thing called a neck, it's not a separate thing. You know your your brain and your body are very much connected. You you try disconnecting it, and you'll see, you know, what happens then. It's all connected. So what you think about affects your body. So if you're focusing the whole time, someone's got chronic pain and all they're doing is focusing on the pain the whole time, which some people do, and understandably so, to be fair. If someone's in a lot of pain, I can understand um, why they would be focusing on it. They're going to be miserable because that's all they're focusing on. And it's very hard to get someone who's going through chronic pain to get them to focus on something different. Because almost, almost feels like, you know, you're dismissing what they're going through and you're not. So it can focusing on chronic pain make it worse yes 100% can focusing on failing driving exam you know focusing on failing it visualizing failing it before you get there can that affect the results of the driving exam yes 100% Can expecting to pass the driving exam affect it? Yes. Can imagining passing it and doing everything correctly and feeling positive, can, can that affect it? Yes. But it doesn't mean it's going to happen. But it can affect it. So if you imagine failing a driving lesson, or driving test rather, it doesn't mean you're going to fail a driving test. But there's a hell of a lot more chance you're going to pass it if you trust and believe that you're going to pass it. But even believing you're going to pass it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to pass. Because you also need the knowledge. You need to know what you're doing. 
you need com- competency as well as self belief. So there's different variables at play. So imagining something happening, you know, the the anxiety, the panic, the the dread of something terrible happening isn't going to make it happen. But focusing on it and imagining it, I guarantee you're going to feel crappy. That's that's the one guarantee. You're not going to feel good, are you? You're not going to feel happy. Not going to feel positive if you're focusing on negative stuff. And you could say, "Well, it's, I can't can't control it. That's how I feel, and that's you know." But we've always always got an option to change how we feel, to do something different, to think differently, which is part of why I make these recordings, because I also need to be reminded of that myself as well we're always changing we're all different now to what we were before I started talking in this recording before you press the play button we're all different we've in the last 38 minutes we've changed Our blood has pumped through our body. Our digestive system has moved further. You know, if we had eaten something, it's more digested. We've got new, new parts of our bodies grown. You know, like the cells and stuff. I don't mean new fingers and stuff, but you know, we've got cells that have regrown. Hairs that have perhaps fallen out. New hairs that have started to grow. Who knows? It's constantly changing how many times has the world spun in the last 38 minutes how many times have you breathed in and out how many times have you blinked or changed your body you know maybe moved a hand or moved your shoulder or maybe you move the way your head is from one side to the other. Maybe you've scratched yourself. Maybe you've wiggled your toes, whatever. It's always change. We're not statues. We're not made of stone. So we do actually have an effect, we can have an effect, and we do have an effect on what happens. And there are those instances that are just so random that you could not prepare for it. And we can't be prepared for everything. It's a simple fact. Nobody can ever be prepared for everything because we don't know what's going to happen in life. But we can have a good idea. Because generally, things are quite often very similar, aren't they? If you've got a a job you go to regularly, the job will change, there'll be different things happening, but there'll be a familiarity. When you go home, you know, your house will very much look the same as it did when you left for work and you got home unless you've got a ferret running around knocking stuff off shelves like me you know whatever I think about at work if I was at work on the bus on the train walking home whatever I think about in my mind the Andre, my little boy, ferret, whatever he... If I imagine that he's trashed the place, I say trashed, but he, sometimes he does make a mess, 
or if I imagine that he's asleep, or if I imagine that he's died, yeah, extreme, or that he's escaped through the window. It doesn't matter what I imagine. It makes no difference to the reality. The reality of what's happening in here has got no connection to what I'm thinking as I'm walking down the road. The different reality, that's his reality. What's happening here, I'm not controlling it. I can't control it just by thinking it. Otherwise, I would be the richest person on the planet. I'd probably get burnt at the stake as well for being a witch or something. But for that journey, if I'm thinking the worst, oh, he's escaped, he's got through the window, or something bad's happened, I'm going to feel crappy. I'm perhaps going to run or walk quickly and maybe trip over because I'm like, running too quickly or slip on the ice because whatever, something that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't had that negativity in my mind but at the very least I'm going to feel crappy and then I get home and I see everything's fine and he's there, he's, all, he's asleep happy as anything just so I put myself through that for nothing and you know what if I'm thinking to myself as I'm walking back maybe I'm walking from town two hours I've got a two hour journey thinking that Andre's fine and he's happy and he's asleep and I get back and he, he has got out of his window and he's escaped I can feel crappy then. At least I had two hours where I didn't feel crappy. Instead of feeling crappy and then getting back and feeling okay. I'd rather feel, I'd rather that to be fair because I want him to be here. But why put yourself through something you don't need to until you, until it's time? In the same way, I flush, I wash my hands after I've been to the toilet. Not before, not during, after. I eat the food after it's cooked. I don't take it out of the oven once it's half cooked and start eating it or try and eat it raw. I do, you know, do things in the order that they're kind of supposed to be. Because worrying, I mean, there's songs about it, there's poems about it, and there? there's famous songs. What's the use in worrying? It never was worthwhile. Yeah, it's, it doesn't get you anywhere at all. Unless it's a real thing that's happening. You know, if someone's got, let's say if you've got debts and you've got credit card debts, and the only way to actually get yourself out of bed and to open the letters and face it and make the phone calls that need to be made, if the only way that gets you to do that is by worrying, then that's the way some people function. And if not worrying about it means you let all the debts build up and you end up with bailiffs and losing your home, then it'd be better to worry short term. But about real things. It's like selling someone, like my, my, um, my niece was in hospital last year. I was very, very ill and she's only little. Like, no way in the world would I ever tell my brother, don't worry. Because it would be the most stupid thing to say to him. Don't worry, you know, 
worse things could happen. Well, no. There's only one worse thing that could happen. And that's the thing he was worrying about. And luckily she, she, she's recovering. So there's situations where it's natural to worry. But worry about something that is happening. Uh, you know, save it for the big stuff. That's kind of what I would say is what I probably am coming to. Save it for the big stuff because when the big stuff happens, it's going to be, it's naturally a crappy time. So if a loved one's ill or you're ill, whatever, it's a crap, it's not supposed to be nice. It's, you know, it's, I remember a friend, my nan died and she, I went up to the, I was going up there for the funeral and she took me out for lunch and she said, oh, I'm just trying to cheer you up. I said, I don't want cheering up. That's not applicable in this situation. You don't cheer someone up that's bereaved. You don't cheer someone up that's worried about a loved one. It's not about that. Maybe a distraction, it can be. But it's natural to feel worried and to feel upset. It's okay. This podcast isn't for people that are going through stress because of a really traumatic situation happening in their life. Maybe to reduce that stress and to cope with it, but also to realise it's natural. to have that stress levels and the anxiety in really extreme situations. But my experience of things like panic attacks, anxiety, stress, is a lot of it happens when seemingly nothing is really triggering it that's obvious, nothing that would be classed as maybe huge. Maybe something in the past, it could be post-traumatic stress, or worrying about something in the future that hasn't happened, that may never happen. I suppose the question would be, how much are any of us willing to put up with that? How long are you willing to worry about something that may not happen? Moreover, what would you say to a, a child, someone that you really cared about? Maybe not a child, maybe a mother, grandparent, whoever, someone that you really, really love and they were worried about something that you knew, well, you figured realistically is not going to happen. Or if it does happen, there's nothing you can do about it at this point and if it happens in the future you kind of need to do it then but it's a good chance it won't happen you'd want to find a way to tell them or to reassure them that things are going to be okay because that is actually the reality in most cases in most cases, in most scenarios, things are okay. But if you watch the news and you read newspapers, unfortunately it's full of negativity or maybe too much reality or maybe too much of the negative reality. And I can't even remember the last time I saw a nice story on the news. Because no one wants to watch that stuff, apparently. I would. But maybe it would be boring. Oh great, another cat that can do somersaults. You know, and it's, oh, that's, that's nice. It was great the first 700 times. Do I want to watch another 
another animal saving their their owner in an emergency. So those stories, even the even the happy stories, the press, they always like to talk about a horrible experience. Like a dog finds uh, like wakes up a you know, someone that stopped breathing or manages to call press the alarm button because their owners had a had a seizure or something like that. There's always like an underlying fear connected to the stories. So it's kind of for me the asking the universe or positive thinking or what's it called the law of attraction that's about taking control of the steering wheel you know not letting someone else drive your car being the driver of your own car which means you can stop whenever you want you can go wherever you want. You can drive at whatever speed you want. Obviously, there's laws for you know different speed levels, but I'm just talking metaphorically. You can listen to whatever music you want to listen to. And if you want to sing, you can sing. And you know, you haven't got someone else dictating what you do and sometimes it feels I think it can feel like someone else is telling us how we should feel even though it might not be another person it might just be us but almost like on some kind of automatic drive but the automatic driver is the negative part of us And because there's so much negativity around, if we just leave it on automatic, we're going to be affected by that. And Andre has decided to come and walk around on the newspaper to make lots of noise. Thank you, Andre. That's why positivity requires conscious effort. Oh, that's it, Andre. You walk over to the other side now. you want sorry I don't normally get this interrupted by him he was just staring at me so conscious attention on positivity is required is needed it's because it, basically if you don't put effort into positivity the negativity will just automatically just sink in. And that's partly, probably a lot to do with our society. Depends on what society you live in. If you live in a very, very positive society, uh, and maybe you live in a household where everyone's really positive and optimistic and expects good things to happen and expects to uh, be physically well and you know has a very optimistic um, attitude then you might naturally have more of that because that's what you've experienced maybe throughout your life for the first few years of your life I think for probably the majority of people uh, perhaps listening to this maybe you including myself you need to focus and give some energy to the positivity to cultivate it to get in touch with it 
to remind yourself of what you're grateful for, to remind yourself of what you do have, instead of focusing on what you don't have. But then you can focus on what you don't have in a sense of what you'd like to have, with a, an optimism that you will have that. It takes some energy to be positive. Negativity is easy. It's just a case of not doing anything and that stuff just seeps in. Just watch the news, watch television, listen to other people's problems and it, it just sinks in. Unless you say no. Actually no. I don't want that stuff in there. And you start to focus on positive stuff. You start to focus on what you can do. Maybe you read positive books. Listen to uh, positive audios. Um, start to plan feeling good. Start to plan feeling happy. Start to focus on what you do have. Maybe focusing on uh, happy memories. Focusing on what you do want for the future. And actually doing something to get those things, which then increases the positivity, increases the likelihood of you getting those things because you're actually doing something towards it. But on the same side, you could lay in your bed and you could feel positive because you could imagine it and you could feel positive. You're not going to have that money in the bank. You're not going to, it's not going to necessarily improve your physical health as much as if you are physically active. But you feel better. And it may well improve your physical health. But when I'm thinking, I'm thinking more like exercise, losing weight, slimming down, laying in bed, um, generally doesn't do that. You know, I'm not a, a nutritional expert, but so thinking positively, that's what I learned about the law of attraction is actually you get what you think about in a sense of you get the feelings. If you think about good stuff, you're going to feel good. If you think positively you're going to feel positive you're going to feel physically better you're going to feel physically healthier you're going to have a brighter outlook towards you know your future you're going to perhaps look around at your present and notice things and see perceive things in a much different way to how you would if you was looking through the goggles of uh, negativity and I said this in a recent or previous recording no matter how crappy you feel if you suddenly won the lottery the way you felt would change instantly even if you were physically ill your mental state would change instantly so how we think changes how we feel and how we feel changes you know how we emotionally feel changes how we physically feel 
and then it affects what we do it affects how we think so it's like a continuous rolling machine of positivity but without the fakeness of you know always feeling you have to look on the bright side of everything because you don't have to do anything you can choose to do it you can choose to actually look at things in a way that's more useful Because you can think of any really like negative generalization, and if you break it down, it isn't what you think it is. It doesn't hold as much truth, and in fact, it may not hold any reality or truth at all. It's just a thought, it's just a belief that you used to have. Maybe it's been passed on to you by family or by society. Yeah, it might be a prejudice. It might be a self-limiting belief. Because you know the most physically attractive person, you know, no matter how physically attractive they are, and everyone that they meet as an adult, you know, they meet everyone at 18, they go out into the world, and every single man or woman tells them that they're the most beautiful person that any have ever seen physically. If they've spent 18 years in a house being told that they were ugly, that they were no good, and they were horrible and disgusting, which some people are, unfortunately, raised like that, they're not going to believe that they're beautiful. Eventually they might. Eventually I hope they will. But they're not seeing the world. They're not seeing themselves the way other people are seeing them. They're not perceiving themselves the way other people perceive them. And that's quite an extreme situation. But the same side, you know, it's someone might have a mole on their chin or their cheek or a scar you know, on the bridge of their nose or maybe on their forehead that nobody will ever even notice. But that person knows it's there and they think everyone notices it. When in reality, probably no one hardly notices it and those that do, don't care. And that person may hold themselves back not apply for jobs they want to apply for, not go to university, not, you know, just limit their whole life because of that one thing that they feel uh, is almost disabling them. They don't realise that they're disabling themselves. And that's just such a waste So coming back to the original question, I do eventually come back to something that I started, is can thinking about something make it happen? No, I don't think so. But thinking about something horrible happening feels crappy. That's pretty much a guarantee. Expecting something nice to happen feels nice. Or at the very least, feels neutral. Definitely doesn't feel crappy. But more likely going to feel nice. And it might not give you an all over body orgasm. You know, it might not be exploding with pleasure you're going to feel nice it's going to be like oh I'm going to go out today and it's a nice weather it's going to be okay I'm going to have a nice day 
go, or it might just be I'll go to the shops, get some food. Be good to get out, get a bit of uh, air, a bit of fresh air, and just get out and yeah, everything's going to be fine. Just just a little bit, just expecting things to be okay. Not even to be all dramatic, you know, like overly, you know, that kind of dramatically positive. Well, I'm going to get out and um, all the, all, you know, I'm going to get there and I'm going to go to the bus, but suddenly all the neighbours are going to run towards me and say, don't worry about the bus, we'll carry you on our shoulders, we'll carry you all the way to town and we'll all buy you food and we'll give you money for the rest of the year so you never have to buy food again and and we'll cook it we'll take turns cooking your food for you and yeah that's it's a it's a pretty lovely scenario possibly it's pretty quite comical as well but it's unrealistic so it can be funny to think about stuff like that I mean you might get to the position if you was a superstar, you know. I suppose if you was if George Clooney moved in next door to me, I imagine there'd be a lot of people wanting to buy him dinner. I'd be one of them. I'd put yeah. Hi Georgie. How you doing mate? You're paying, yeah? Well let's go for dinner then, as long as you pay. Yeah, got a nice McDonald's up the road. So thinking that things are going to work out okay definitely can't harm. That's the bottom line. It can't do no harm. It can only do good. The worst case scenario is it's neutral. Yeah, on the other side, flip it over. If you're thinking that something's going to be rubbish and it's going to be something bad's going to happen you're going to feel crappy so it's a choice do you want to feel relaxed and calm or do you want to feel crappy it really is that simple that's the choice and it doesn't feel that simple sometimes but actually when you break it down it is that simple because how we feel changes constantly and you choose what you do next always every second of the day you choose what you do next right right now I can choose I can raise my right arm I can turn my body to the left you know I can breathe in hold the breath for a couple of seconds breathe out I can yawn I didn't have to yawn, that was a natural yawn, but I could have held it in. I could have pressed the mute button and yawned so you didn't hear it. I could do a little tap dance. I could chuck something at Andre to stop him from scratching the carpet, but I'm not going to. Get one of his little teddy bears. Chuck it in. (laughs) So, we choose what we do next. So how we feel, we can feel positive. Because we choose to. Instead of waiting for it to happen naturally. And I think that's one of those things that, let's face it, we all want it to happen naturally. I think there's part of us, and I know, but I definitely, I feel it should happen naturally. I should naturally feel good. I should naturally feel positive and good things should happen kind of I don't I don't really want to do any work it's not work but I don't want to have to do anything but actually it involves doing something because there's washing up in the sink that needs to be washed up it's not going to get washed up unless I actually go and do it and no amount of positive thinking is going to make a damn bit of difference apart from maybe giving me the energy to get up and wash up it 
and then I will feel better afterwards. And also I'll have cleaner hands, which is good. Because I use fairy washing up liquid. And now Andre's followed me into the bedroom, so I'm gonna... Now he's following me into the living room again. I don't normally talk about Andre on these podcasts, but he's literally followed me around. I'm trying to escape him, but he's following me. <sighs> so I'm gonna bring this recording to an end. I thought I'd actually give, I'd, I'd talk about something that was asked, you know, that message that was sent to me probably a couple of hours ago on Facebook from Kerry. So I hope I've answered that question firstly. I'll send a, uh, when I've uploaded this, I'll send a link or just send a message saying that I've talked about it on my latest recording. But it has got me thinking, and it's been a subject that I'm interested in. You know, the how we think affects how we feel. And it does. And I don't think anyone can really deny that. I think it's a factual, it's a factual thing. Right, I'm just going to walk out here and get away from him, but he's following me into the bedroom again. I'm going to go because he's just I don't know it's like I've got a bit of string attached to his to him and he's just being dragged along by it but he's not a visible bit of string so thank you for listening I hope that this has resonated a bit and and I've tried to talk about it in the context of anxiety stress and panic and from that kind of angle and I will speak to you next time. Remember to be kind to yourself. As you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.